what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video so this is me currently recording this video on saturday july 23rd you guys won't be seeing this till monday so going on a little mini vacation but i wanted to pre-record some videos for you guys so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reacting to my free agency predictions i made like june 30th like before free agency started i want to see how correct i was uh you know free agency wasn't that crazy so it's not like i'm gonna be that far off but i just kind of want to see what i had to say back then uh, so make sure you guys drop a like this one of course subscribe if you're new but like i said if uh something crazy happened like donovan mitchell got traded i'm not aware of it as i'm recording this because obviously it is saturday when you guys are seeing this monday but regardless let's go ahead and jump into this video before you get the video make sure you guys drop a like at this one of course subscribe if you're new to the channel around here trying to reach 1,000 subs and by doing that we are still grinding while we're gone man like i said i wanted to pre-record some videos for you guys so let's go ahead and listen to this and listen to what i had to say like i said i shouldn't be that far off because free agency wasn't even that crazy but it is still kind of interesting to see what I had to say back then. So let's see what happens. One, of course, subscribe if you're new around here. And of course, comment down some. Just like he said, subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get it, boys. All right, I'm going right to get comfortable one. here. So first free agent we are going to talk about is Zach Levine. There's been a lot of rumors about Levine potentially going to the Lakers, which that was no. some time ago. But all signs are pointing towards him finally just going to sign that mass contract with the Chicago Bulls getting a five-year deal, and that is what I'm going to ultimately predict. Let's go, baby! One to one, easiest Chicago prediction Bulls ever. Five-year mass contract, continuing what they built off last year, where of course they had a lot of injuries, but him and Demar Derozan will be back together, and Zach Levine will be a Chicago Bull after free agency is over. One of the one. Very next free agent we're talking about, similar to Zach Levine, I think Bradley Beal will remain with the Washington Wizards. They just made a Let's go, yesterday. two for that two. To me, they are trying to win now. They are still trying to compete. They traded KCP and Ish Smith in order to get Monty Morris and Will Barton. Those are two guys that can immediately help out right now. So I assume Bradley Beal will ink that five-year, $248 million contract. Now, will he stay the, those whole five years? Well, that remains to be seen. That remains to be seen, today, obviously. I think at this free agency, Bradley Beal will ultimately sign that five-year deal and remain with the Washington Wizards. So, so far, I think both guys we've talked about are two for two teams. So that's easy. So easy stuff. So the easy next player. We're going to be talking about is James Harden on the Philadelphia. This will be three for three. He probably declined his $47 million player option. And we're all kind of wondering what kind of money would he get this offseason, whether or not he would accept that player option. He did not. He declines it. And apparently he's going to sign for a lot cheaper to help out the Philadelphia 76 to acquire more talent, which I think. Round of applause which he James did Harden, so let's keep giving w. him a round of applause huge w for, for the 76ers and like like james harden 30 million dollars annually they're reporting so that's a lot less than what he could get so uh him taking a pay cut for the 76ers to get some more talent and you know ultimately trying to uh get back and win a championship and apparently he's been starting his harden took that pay cut to reunite the whatever year it was rockets team where they had daniel house pj tucker and now all they're missing is eric gordon so Maybe eventually we'll see Eric Gordon traded to Philadelphia. I don't even know what the money would look like. Matisse Thibel has been kind of rumored to be traded, but other than that, I don't know who else you'd throw in the trade, but sounds like I'm about to be three for three on this so far. Let's go. Off-season workouts uh, sooner than usual. So it looks like James Harden's all in on trying to win a championship at Philadelphia. And I think they can, but he's got to be at least a little bit more aggressive, man. He was not aggressive enough in the playoffs, but ultimately, I mean, if it's not obvious already, James Harden will be back with this Saturday Sixers, and that's what I'm predicting, locking it in. I think that one's pretty easy. Three the for three. One is probably the oh. toughest one of them all. DeAndre Aiden on the Phoenix Suns. So obviously the first three we've predicted, we've all you know, kind of predicted they'll be back with their respective teams. DeAndre Aiden, on the other hand, could technically be back with the Suns, but apparently Which he is all now, as we know. signs are pointing towards him being somewhere else. Now, as far as where he's going to go, I mean, really it's anyone's guess. I have no idea, but obviously I have to give you one team that I think he's going to go to. There's been a few teams that have been kind of rooted for him, like four teams. I mean, there's been a lot of teams. Like, I can see the Pacers getting him. I can see the uh, Suns you know, keeping him. I could see uh, the Blazers have been kind of rumored here and there, but I don't think so. And then you got Charlotte. You got Atlanta, who just got John T. Murray. So there's a lot of a lot of things happening. So what am I going to predict? I think I like him on... Uh, I think I like him on the Hawks for some uh, reason. I feel like the Hawks okay. are done making L. moves. In That's an L. Day. I feel like the Hawks are going to be looking for a better center or the Hornets. I do like Aiden on the Hornets as well, but it's just, I, it's tough to tell, but I'm going to ultimately say DeAndre Aiden ends up on the Atlanta Hawks and some kind of sign and trade where the Suns get uh Clint Capella, maybe. Nope. Or just never happened like that. And so would have been cool, but it didn't draft, happen. Maybe no draft picks involved, but the Hawks do have a couple of you know, nice young pieces and other win now pieces for 
uh, the Suns that they could be interested in. So I guess this one being the toughest of them all, I'm going to say DeAndre Aiden ends up in Atlanta. If not DeAndre Aiden, I think Gobert will end up in Atlanta, but I'm going to go I was wrong on that DeAndre too. Aiden to the Hawks, and hopefully I'm correct, but that one's tough. The next free agent we're talking about is Jalen Brunson. Oh, this is, is a, this is a softball. Apparently, I got he this. Has three team meetings to start free agency. And as we know, the Knicks have been making a lot of trades of dump salary. They've traded Kim Walker, they've traded Nars well, and they traded Alec Burks. And that's freed up a lot of money. And apparently, they are all in on trying to get Jalen Brunson. So, uh, but I guess the Mavericks are going to be uh, meeting with Jalen Brunson. And then apparently, the Miami Heat are as well. So, ultimately, I'm going to eliminate the Miami Heat because I don't think that makes a ton of sense. So I think he's either going to remain with Dallas or New York. But at the end of the day, I'm going to predict since there is such a larger role for him with the Knicks, I think he will ultimately sign Let's a go! very, very big contract with the New York Knicks. And he is going to leave Dallas because of, you know, Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic obviously is the guy over there. So Jalen Brunson be, could, you know, could become the starting point guard over in New York next to uh, RJ Barrett. And then maybe if Julius Randle is still there, him as well. So ultimately going to say Jalen Brunson inks a very, very big contract. And goes to the New York Knicks. Okay, so, so far I only got reasons, one wrong. I so far. I decided to throw these two together because obviously they're both the Blazers free agents with Simons and Nurkic. And I obviously predict both of them will be back with the Blazers. All signs point towards Nurkic being back. And obviously I don't think the Blazers would let Simons walk. If they did, they'd be very stupid. Uh, if they, if Simons was gone, it would be in some kind of sign-in trade. But I don't think anything like that is happening. So ultimately... I think Simons will sign a four or five year deal with the Portland Trail. Sign a four year deal. As far as Nurkic is concerned, who's unrestricted, obviously. Um, I mean, he literally sat out uh, on a contract year. Why would you do that if you're trying to maximize your value? Obviously, the Blazers were tanking. So I assume uh, that obviously there's some kind of plan in place for Nurkic and the Blazers that they already kind of came to an agreement like, hey, man, if you sit out while we tank and you know you don't go out there and play good basketball, we'll pay you. Which is something year. that so was overlooked, in my, in my opinion. Stuff. Uh, correlating with the Portland Trailblazers. So, yeah, both these two will be back with the Blazers. I, uh, I've i heard Nurkic will get around $17 million per year. And then which Simon's is exactly like what he got. Year, so, and uh, Simon's got 25 I think, though. Nurkic may be a little steep, but I think that's probably what his value would be. So, I predict both of these guys back with the Blazers. I think that one's pretty easy. Got them and both right. Let's go. Mo oh, Mo Bamba. Orlando Magic. So, apparently, they did not. There's no way I got this one right. I don't know if I just made a lot of noise with my mic, but there's literally no way I got this one right. I thought for sure Mo Bamba was leaving Orlando. There's no way I thought he was just staying there, but he did stay. Offer making him an unrestricted free agent, I believe. So, that is kind of crazy. So, I would assume that the Magic have no plans to keep Mo Bamba around. Which is the like total to opposite. Walk into free agency and seeing where he can go. And I think there's a number of contenders who would love Mo Bamba, but I think the best landing spot for Mo Bamba is oh, yes. makes the most sense for him, and it just seems like a perfect fit. Toronto. I love Toronto Mo and Mo Bamba. Obviously, seems so obvious, but... Anyway. So if they went ahead and signed Mo Bamba for... Didn't happen. The Raptors, like, I don't know if they have the full mid-level or the taxpayer. I don't know what it is. Mo Bamba just seems like a Raptor to me. I don't even know why that is the case, but I thought for sure... Mo Bamba would be in Toronto, like 100% thought, or I wouldn't, I've, okay, I thought 100% sure he was leaving, no idea he was going to stay whatsoever, but he did, and he's in Orlando still, which is crazy, definitely maybe a trade deadline candidate, maybe, we'll see. Harrisman level, but if they can get Mo Bamba on one of those and sign him to like a multiple year contract or a one year deal, I love the idea of Mo Bamba potentially being their starting center going forward, he just seems like a Toronto Raptor, so I'm going Mo Bamba the Toronto Raptors, and I absolutely, absolutely love that fit if the Raptors can get him. So up next is Colin Sexton for the Cleveland Cavaliers, and I'm going to ultimately say Colin Sexton is probably back with Cleveland based off what we know. We don't even know year. yet, but I mean, yeah, it seems like he'll be game, back. He got injured, so I think uh, for him to prove himself again, he gets like a shorter-term contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers, whether it's just playing on the qualifying offer or getting a one- or two-year deal with Cleveland, I think he will ultimately be back. Which it seems like he Cleveland is going to play on the like, qualifying offer, I think. Later on. I don't know if there's a ton of teams that have the cap space that would want to sign a guy and like take a chance on Sexton, but maybe maybe there are some teams out there and maybe Sexton finds a role somewhere else. But my prediction is I'm going to ultimately think he, I ultimately think he's going to land back in Cleveland and kind of build off what they, you know, obviously were able to succeed this last year. Without Probably got that one right. But hopefully with him, they're an even better team. So I'm ultimately going to predict Colin Sexton to the Cleveland Cavaliers on maybe like a shorter term contract to prove himself again. So another center on the open market Ooh, that I Mitch think Robinson. is pretty intriguing. That is Mitchell Robinson. I think there's a lot of contenders that would line up for his services off the bench. But I think ultimately for Mitchell Robinson, 
uh, for him to still be a starter. I think the Knicks make the most sense. So I think he'll be back with the Knicks on a similar type contract to what Yusuf Nurkic got, maybe a little, or what New Yusuf Nurkic, I think what he will get, uh, but maybe a little bit cheaper. So I like Mitch Robinson on like a 13 to $17 million per year contract. He got like 15 million a year, so year not too Knicks. bad. Maybe that's a little too expensive and maybe gets less than that, but that's what I think is going to happen. So uh, ultimately, Mitch Robinson, I'm going to say to the New York Knicks, and we have one last for agent to talk about. So last but certainly not least, uh, I let's not even to... let's not even talk about that one. Okay, so I got Mo Bamba wrong and I got DeAndre Ayton wrong. And then as far as Miles Bridges is concerned, man, the one takeaway I have from that is you know what we can talk about the violent stuff and we just don't know the full story. It looks terrible though. If Miles Bridges really did that, then I don't know what they're gonna do. You know, athletes seem to get away with stuff like that all the time. But regardless. Uh, the team I feel bad for the most is Charlotte fan. I feel bad for Charlotte fans right now because Miles Bridges was supposed to be that next star. He was supposed to be the star next Lamelo, and now that they lose him potentially, well, we don't know what's exactly going to happen yet. But maybe he can't play basketball again. I don't know if that'll be the case because, like I said, athletes get away with stuff all the time. But Charlotte has barely done anything this off season. In fact, they've gotten worse if Miles Bridges doesn't play. So. Mellow Ball, I don't know. The Hornets just seem like a team with not a direction right now. So I'm curious to see how it's going to go. Obviously, LaMelo is the guy there, but what else do you have outside of LaMelo? That remains to be seen. Maybe James Bugnight becomes something this year. I'm I'm curious to see what happens with Miles Bridges. You know, we'll see. But hope you guys enjoyed this video regardless. Uh, drop a like if you enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow. This is Crushables Extended. I'm saying peace.